while he's down there? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm not sure. Her. Yes, it's, it's recording. Life is a highway. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> it, it does say recording. Look, honey, brown trout. <laughs> Oh, are you filming? Yeah, I'm practicing. Oh, hello. Nancy is now our new camera girl. <laughs> Jim's helping. And Jim is helping. Obviously. It's 11 o'clock on God knows what day, and we have seven days and counting left to do so many projects. If you look here, this is just a fraction of the projects. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split up the projects that we need to do before we sail and the ones that we can do on an island while we eat lobster and don't brush our hair. I can't wait for that. It's gonna be fantastic. So we're all excited and moderately stressed out because schedules and pants. I think everyone's stressed out but me. <laughs> That's good. We'll work on that. Well, Jim's not stressed out either. I'm not stressed out. No. Today is window repair day. As you can see here, I already took some of the duct tape off and then we're gonna stuff in here with this cheesecloth stuff that I got, which is right here. Initially, I had planned on putting epoxy in there, um, which was gonna harden, but with the way that the um, wood swells and shrinks, what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna add teak oil to the rags. So the idea with the rags is to um, take up the gap in between the frame and the window, which is a huge gap. So I had these windows custom made by a friend of mine and uh, it was the first time he had done them. He had the CAD and all of that stuff and it just, it's kind of turned out to be a little bit of a nightmare. They're beautiful, but it's a little bit of a nightmare because they, it's like, they leak like I don't even have windows. Um, so each one is unique. So they each need a different amount of shims. So I think I'm gonna take the wood shims out and um, just stuff that rag in there and then add teak oil instead. And I think that the teak oil is gonna add some density to the rag. Now, this is just an experiment, so I'm just trying it. We've kind of been kicking around ideas about what to do and uh, this is what I've come up with. So um, we're gonna take the um, goo or the caulking out of the inner flange of the window on the outside. Um, can you call it a flange? Anyway, inner frame and sand them down a little bit. I had um, epiphanes on them and um, penetrating stop rot epoxy, um, but I'm gonna sand that down I'm gonna add teak oil because that is also penetrating and it uh, congeals, con con coagulates. <laughs> and um, I was gonna make up a word. <laughs> and, uh, and that also works really well and it's less maintenance. So that's what we're gonna be up to today. So I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna take the duct tape off. And what Searle was telling me was that he used, um, was it JB something spray? Let me find it here. Oh, JB Blaster. So Searle used this JB Blaster and it gets the goo from the duct tape off of the paint. So, penetrating catalyst. So we'll try that out. This PB Blaster is great stuff, just maybe not in this application. Oh, perfect. All right, so let's leave that on there for a bit. See how that comes off. Guys, I just sprayed that on the outside and now you can see exactly where it's leaking in because it's a funky color. So if I press here, you can see how it kind of, here's a good spot, you can see how it kind of squishes out and that's what we want to do. Wow, these are super leaky. So here's my bread or cheesecloth, I got it at Target. It's kind of like a thin material. So I'm just stuffing it in here to fill up the gap. And this is what they used to do um, in between the planks of the old ships is they would take cotton and like a tar and they'd roll it up and this is what would make the ship um, watertight. So we're kind of using that same principle here with the windows. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add teak oil because I think that'll be, I was originally gonna use epoxy but I think that's gonna be less permanent. And when you do things like this, you want it to be a little less permanent just in case you have to redo it. Like I have had to redo this for the fifth time. <laughs> Says I, I really don't want to look at these windows again. And we've scratched the Lexar, Lexian, to shit. So I'm gonna try like a headlight polishing 
thing. So wish us luck. We've got 10% of one down, three more to go. At this point, I'm really, really wishing I would have just ordered factory windows. So as the gap gets thinner, I'm just cutting thinner strips for in between here. It's tricky because the gap around the entire window is different. In fact, I don't even think I'm gonna be able to fit the scissor in here. Maybe this buck knife blade. This is the teak oil, and this is the stuff I said coagulates, conjules. I made up a couple other words too. Um, so I'm just taking this syringe, which is a really fine tip, and I'm gonna put it into this fabric, and hopefully it can doodles the way it should. I'm just gonna go in here and just add some more substance to this fabric. All right, well, cross your fingers, guys. I hope this works. And the windows are leaking again. Badly. You can, yeah, this one you can see. Super upsetting for me. I just want the windows to be sealed. So bad. I thought you liked having the water on the inside of the boat. No, that's that's the opposite of the goal. Look, look, how well, that, up the look how dirty it is as well. We were all grabbing it. Okay. Yeah. We'll have a drawn diagram to explain everything in. Searle will have a drawn diagram <laughs> to explain <laughs> things in much better. Okay. Blue stuff, not the red stuff. You can need a lot of force on it. And now we're gonna tap and dye these little guys into the boom. So, okay, so this guy is a 24. The trick with a tap and dye tool is to do it very slowly and back out often. I had no idea that this tool even existed, but now that I do, I want to use it on everything. Ah, no. You just got Loctite on the bimini. <laughs> Uh-oh. You don't think that maybe we should put them on the boom? Another support going down the sides. You've got quite a big sail on this boat, so more spaces. I just saw there's a lot of different ways to do it. A lot of ways to skin a Ricky. Okay, there's also a lot of ways to skin a sail. What's the length?
but it's always easy to alter it again later. I'm pretty sure it would use four. That's why I wanted to use a cleat on the mark. We can put four pad eyes in the dog. So we're, just gonna, so we're gonna have that come down to a point where it will be on a pulley, then go down to two pulleys. Okay. So do we have six pulleys there? So I'm sure you're wondering why I'm going through all of the trouble to put up lazy jacks and then buy a stack pack. Well when you're single handing and you let the mainsail down, it just goes all over the deck and I feel like it really gets away from you. And on Little Miss, it hangs all the way over into the water almost. So I thought that installing lazy jacks would make it a little bit easier for me to manage her on my own. struggling with a rivet gun. It's a pop rivet gun. Another tool I've never used and now I love. Here we go. Yeah. Put yourself in the face. <laughs> like a professional. likes to stop by and find out if I have my whistle available. And if I don't, he threatens to write me a ticket. Hi without uh, an in here. The two pieces of rope you have in your hand, you can tie them up. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. A big thank you to my patrons. This wouldn't be possible without you. Don't miss out on The Daily Show on Vimeo. Check the description below. We'll see you next week on Sailing Miss Lone Star.